Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Harris and today we're going to be looking at how to make a line follow in a continuation of our Build Your Own Library series. Last time we looked at how to make drive and turn functions. If you haven't gone and watched that yet, I would advise you to do so because everything we do is going to be dependent on that code. It's not much, so if you don't need that and you already know how to make basic drives using the tick counter, then you can go ahead and just go in right into this. We're going to be looking at a method of line follow that's not usually used by most people when you think of a line follow. We're going to do the basic line follow first, but then we're going to go into one that is smooth and is based on a gradient that actually works much better than what I see 90% of teams using. So even if you think you already have a good line follow, I would suggest sticking around or maybe skipping to the end. I'll put a time code in so you can get to that part of the tutorial. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So this code right here should be familiar, whether or not you've just know how to code or familiar with code, or if you've been watching our series, this code clears the motor position counter of the right or the wheel in port zero. And then while the tick counter of the zero, the the wheel in port zero is less than 10,000, we're gonna move both wheels at speed 750. So how can we change this code? Using this as a base, how can we change this code into a line follow? Well, what is a line follow? A line follow is a way that you can drive down the board, but instead of trying to drive dependent on a straight line, you're trying to drive dependent on the, the tape line that is on that table. You've seen a line follow before if you've seen a robotics competition. It's just a way for the bot to drive according to that line. This is advantageous because it allows you to drive much more accurately. If you can go down a black line, it's going to help you a lot more. And that's also going to just make sure that you know where you are on the board. If you're driving without any sensors, like in using line follows, then you could be somewhere completely different with it, where, than where you think you are. If you're driving without using line follow, then you could have no idea where you are. But if you're using a line follow, you know that you're locked onto that black line. That's gonna help you get into place for whatever you're trying to do in your run. But how does a line follow work? Well, a line follow works by using soft arcs either to the left or to the right, depending on what side of the light, the tape you're on. If I'm over to the right of the black tape, then the bot is going to slowly arc back to the black tape. And if I'm on the black tape, then I'm going to slowly arc back to the white. And this is going to create an arcing and zigzagging little wave down the black line that's going to help us move straight down that edge. So how could we make this in code? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All we have to do is say if, and then we're gonna say analog. This allows us to access the analog ports on the Wombat. And if we just specify what port we want, say we plug our line follow sensor into port zero, then we can receive the data coming from the sensor. Now, the value is going to read as low if it's on the white and high if it's on black. So if we're on the white, like I showed in the diagram earlier, we wanna turn back to the left. So if analog is less than 1700, because the we're gonna just go ahead and pick a middle value because it usually goes from somewhere about 200 to about 3000. So if we just pick something that's in the middle here, roughly, we can get what we're looking for. So we can say, if analog is less than about halfway in between, that means it's on the white. And so we want to say, instead of moving in a straight line like this, we're actually going to turn or turn in an arc back towards the black line. So in this particular setup, zero is the right wheel and one is the left wheel. And so if we're trying to turn to the left, we want the left wheel to have less speed and the right wheel to have more speed. So let's actually go ahead and put something in like 300 and just because we're gonna slow it down. And then we're gonna say this one as 350. That's going to give us a decent arc, but it's still gonna be slow enough to where it's not like violently turning in circles. So that's what happens when we're on the white. But if we continue to travel in this slow arc back to the black line, eventually we're gonna hit the black line and we're going to need to travel in the opposite direction. So we need to have the code for that down as well. So if this value is greater than 1000, then we want to arc in the opposite direction, meaning we push the bot this way. And now that code is gonna simply go down the black line, simple as that. And so we can actually come in here and we can go ahead and put that into another function like the ones we have up here. 
We still want to keep the lock the motors in because that's important is just so we don't get overflow and make sure we stop just on a dime, so to speak. So we can just come down here. We can say void line follow. We want to specify a couple things just like motor here or the drive up here. We're going to specify distance and speed. But we also we also want to specify what port we're going to be line following out of. Because what if we need to change that line follow sensor to another port on the wombat, such as one, two, three, etc. So we can paste that code into here. We can change this to be distance. And we can change speed. Instead of being base values like this, we could say since we want this one to be bigger, we can say speed plus 25 and speed minus 25. That way we're still around the speed that we want, but those wheels are still adjusting to turn in an arc. This one is going to be the exact opposite because we need to arc the other way. Now, you can play around with this and you can see what other arcs do for you. You'll see you'll get a much more violent turn if you increase this and you'll get a much softer turn if you decrease these. the change in the wheel speeds is what you're looking for. So, this is the basic line follow. If this is all you need and this is all you want, you're done. But I do have a way that we can make this better if we go a little bit more complicated. Because this has some issues. It does curve and zigzag, so really? Once it ends and the code ends, your chance of being pointed directly forward are going to be very slim. So if you need to be able to turn accurately after this, it's not going to happen. Also, the zigzag could jostle something from moving out of your claw or hurt something on your robot. So that's why we have the smooth line follow because smooth line follows are relying on the variability of the sensor. If the sensor is all the way on the white, you're going to get a value like 200. If you're all the way on the black, you're going to get a value like 3000. But if your sensor is halfway on the white, halfway on the black, you're going to see a value reading of about 1700. So that means depending on how much of that sensor is on the black tape, because it has a certain width, you're going to see a change in that graph value. Meaning, we can depend our speed or the amount we're using this arc by how far we are away from that middle value because we can see how much we need to adjust depending on how much that sensor is on or off the black tape. All we have to do is come in here and instead say, we're going to instead declare a variable called error. Now error is going to be equal to the analog value minus the gray value or the center value that we're trying to hit. 1700 is what we're going to see when the when the analog sensor is about halfway off the white and halfway on the black. If the analog value, if the analog sensor is reading 1700, then our error is going to be zero. If we're on the black and analog is greater than 1700, then error is going to be greater. So we can just go ahead and say error is greater than zero. That equals black. And if error is less than zero, that means we're on the white or more towards the white or more towards the black. So we could go ahead and come down here and say, okay, we can change this out to be one of each. And I'm going to go ahead and write this like this. Now we can say, okay, if we're on the black, like we've just said here, that means error is going to be greater than zero. So we want to give, when we're on the black, we want to give left, the left wheel, the greater value. So on the left wheel, we're going to add error. And on the right wheel, we're going to subtract error. And there you go. Technically this works, but there is one little issue. Error is going to get up to values of about possibly 1500. Well, MAV, the speed variance is only 1500, 0 to 1500. So we're potentially saying speed 
which is 750 minus 1500, that's going to be much too drastic of a turn. Your bot's gonna be spinning around in circles and your Lego claw is gonna break and you're gonna have a bad day. So we need to dampen how much error is affecting this speed. So instead of putting error directly into the function right here, or to the wheel speed right here, we're going to make a new variable. It's a float and call it speed modifier. Now speed modifier is basically going to be error, but instead we're going to dampen that value a little bit, basically by multiplying it by a really small number. Basically, usually R stays around 0.02. So now we can come in here and we can say speed modifier instead, and we're going to get the same results. Now, in case you're confused, we only have to use one set because it's going to switch the direction of the wheels if error goes negative, meaning we're on the white, so then it will be a negative of a negative, meaning this one will be the greater wheel, and this one will be the negative, so this will be the lesser wheel, meaning that we do arc in the other direction. So chances are when you come down here and type in your code, like you would, so you're gonna say line follow, we're gonna say distance is good, say 5,000 and 500, and port zero, because that's the port that our analog sensor is in. When we compile this and hit run, the bot drives in a smooth line follow. But something to note about this, your bot might not be smooth line following and it might be jostling just as hard as it did earlier. You need to play with this constant right here because your bot also could be not turning enough. It could be look like it's turning in a perfectly straight line. That's basically going to be dependent on the gray and white values difference that you're getting. If you're getting all the way down to 50 or 4,000, then this number needs to be lower. But if you're only getting changes of 200, so you're getting like 800 to 1400 or something like that, then you're definitely going to need to increase this number to something like seven. Or just keep fine tuning this number until you find is what is smoothest for your table or for your conditions at the tournament. But usually, once you get it in a rough range, depending on how high your distance sensor, your line follow sensor is, it should be about a spiked nut above the table, then you're going to be able to put this value in somewhere and you now have a smooth line follow. Editing Jonathan here, just wanted to say, on top of wanting to adjust that value that's affecting speed modifier, you also might need to adjust your gray value. Basically, the in-between value between what you're reading for white and what you're reading for black. To do this is really easy. All you gotta do is just go on there, see what your value is reading on the white, see what it's reading on the black, and get the average of that. So, once again, I'm going to give you a little bit of a task on your own, just because I don't want you copying down code and I want you actually getting to do some of the critical thinking yourself. Last time, uh, my challenge was to figure out how to convert this ticks distance into centimeters so that you could instead of saying how many ticks you wanted to go down here, you could say how many centimeters you wanted to go. Well, the answer to that is basically just find out exactly how many ticks are in a centimeter by saying drive 5,000, measure that distance, and dividing that distance by the number of ticks you drove. Once you've done that, all you have to do is multiply this number by what you got. Usually it's around 83. Today I want to challenge you by asking you to make the distance that you're recording more accurate. Right now, we're only going and measuring off of one wheel. Well, if you're doing a line follow, your bot's going to be turning left and right, left and right, and your right wheel and your left wheel are not going to be traveling the same distance. So how can I maybe figure out what the distance I've traveled is according to both wheels? So that's what I leave you with today. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If I miss anything, I'm sorry. Leave a comment or just message me on Discord. Most of you are going to be in the robotics Discord. Um, I hope this was helpful. Next time I'm gonna be working on a slow servo. That was also requested in the Discord. And then we'll see where we go from there. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.